All right, this is a Seabird USC-1 band shell jukebox, and today I'm going to uh, try and adjust the bias, the B-I-A-S, on the amplifier. And uh, as a reference, if you don't uh, you know, this is the Seabird SHP Amplifier Operation and Troubleshooting Guide written by a man named Tony Miller. And in here... Uh, on page, uh, gosh, what page is it? Yeah, page 40. Page 40 and 41, he talks about um, adjusting the bias. So, using that. Alright, those of you who don't know, um, you pull this down. And that's your control center, and here's your amplifier. Um, when I bought this jukebox, it came with an SHP-1 amplifier, code B. Um, what's supposed to be in this is a, a, a TSA-10 amplifier, which was an earlier model, but they went ahead, someone swapped it out and put a SHP in it. So I'm using this SHP guide because this has an SHP amplifier. Um, what I'm going to use to uh, adjust the bias on this is a small Phillips head screwdriver and a cheap but useful um, digital multimeter, a DMM, not an analog type, but a digital type because you need to get it pretty exact. Alright, and for this I'm going to turn this to um, 200 little m, mv. So, now the idea is you set this probe in this red hole and you're going to touch the other onto the back side of this transistor. Be very careful not to touch anything else because that transistor is actually insulated and doesn't make contact with this, uh, this heat shield here, this heat sink. So you're going to be very, very carefully touching that. Alright, so first I'm going to go ahead, I, I've had this on for, I don't know, a half hour now, playing some music, so it's a working amplifier, and I've warmed it up. So, amplifier on, and I check this, and it reads zero. Now, I've done this already once before to know what this is. Basically, the person before me has turned the bias all the way down to zero or none on both of these. And the bias control, um, and again, don't do this if you haven't gotten Tony's book and understand what you're doing. But you've got a thing over here that says left bias and right bias. And if you look down in the side down here, you're going to see two itty bitty Phillips screwdriver sized things. So right now I'm on the left side. And so I'm going to put my screwdriver in this one. And I'm going to adjust that until that reading there is um, at 4. And since I need three hands to do that, um, you're not going to watch me turn it. Okay, I've been very carefully turning this, and uh, I'm at 0 0.4243. I, I stopped it when it was at 0.39, uh, and it's just slowly going up. So I'm going to turn this back down a bit. Somehow it's uh, it's continuing to rise, and that's the last thing I wanted to do. I want to keep it at four. Okay, I adjusted it down to 3.8, and it's slowly creeping back up. As you can see, it's now at 4.3. And uh, if you look over, and you can't really see from where I'm looking at, but over here on that side strip it actually tells you right there what to adjust it to and it says I believe that you can adjust it between 4 and 8 okay uh, I don't want to push it up near the 8 level I would prefer to keep it right at the 4 end of life but now it's already creeping up to 5 so I'm going to go ahead and turn this off stop videoing and I'm going to change it back down to 4 again. Alright I'm down at 
439. Now I just popped up to 4394. It's like an auctioneer here. Do I hear 4.1? It's going once, it's going twice. So, obviously, I'm trying to get this at a stable reading. Uh, one of the things I did just with the whole machine off, since I knew it was this was turned all the way down counterclockwise to as far as it would go, with the whole machine unplugged, I went ahead and took my screwdriver and actually turned it all the way up and down a few times, basically just trying to see if there was any gunk on the potentiometer, uh, since it probably hasn't been turned in at least uh, 10 years. Um, I wanted to see. If I could just make sure it was going to work correctly. Now, my thought also on this to clean these things is you can shoot some contact cleaner that is safe for potentiometers. Um, so I might pull this out and spray it and turn and see if I can clean any gunk out of there. Because this, as you can see, this is still creeping up. I just don't like that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. So uh, the right side. See, it's at zero now. And it's cranked all the way down counterclockwise as far as it'll go. That's how I found it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off the camera so I can safely do this because I don't want to touch anything I'm not supposed to. Remember, this is a hot amplifier. There's uh, there's power running through this thing. So you don't want to shock yourself or do anything bad to the, uh, well, anything. You or the Seabird. Be nice to both. Alright, so I've adjusted the screw on the side of the potentiometer. So this one's reading about 3, 4, 3, 5. If I just do it just a tad more, just turning out just as little as I possibly can clockwise, it pops it up to about 4.7. So I don't want that, so I prefer, I'd rather have it low than have it high. So this one is kind of staying pretty steady though. It's not really jumping all over like the other one. I'm going to go ahead and test the other one now and see. Cheap multimeter. See if this one is still going up in range. Yep, this one is now jumped up to 4.7, 4.8. So I'm going to crank this one back down a little bit. Again, I prefer to have it to the 394 level. Okay, well, I've gotten them both uh, adjusted. Uh, I'm going to leave them, they're both sitting about 3.5, and that's uh, that's good enough for me at this point. I'm, I'm happy because they're not zero anymore. I'm going to turn this on again and see if it sounds better.